Ever since I made that video on how to set up a multicast TV server, a lot of people have tried it and they've got themselves in trouble because they don't have a network that can handle multicast properly. Okay, the beauty of multicast is that an infinite number of users can watch a TV channel and the server only has to put that channel out once and it's up to the network infrastructure to duplicate that stream to whoever wants to view it. I'm going to show you a method now though where we can convert that to unicast in the server. That way, whenever just say one user wants to connect, they'll get, a, they'll get the stream to them. However, if there's 10 users want to connect, even if they're watching the same channel, the server will now have to put that unicast stream out 10 times. So this is more intensive for the server, which is why I don't recommend it really. Uh, multicast, the beauty of multicast is that it's, it's scalable, okay? So this won't be scalable, but if you're a home user and you just want to try this with unicast, then you can give this a go. To explain it, I'm going to use a pen and paper. Okay, what I had in the past was a Linux box, which was a Raspberry Pi, a switch, and of course it had its Ethernet connection. Now within that connection, there were about, let's say, for example, five different multicast streams, all going to the switch. Okay, so Raspberry Pi, switch. Now, they were always going to the switch, and the switch has all its outputs, or inputs, outputs, whatever, and a user here, if they wanted to watch it, the switch would simply send that multicast through to it, okay? If there's a user here that didn't want it, the switch wouldn't bother, okay? And if a user down here wanted it, the switch would forward that through as well, okay? So the, the switch would replicate whichever stream was wanted by whichever user. And that's what makes it scalable. So the Raspberry Pi doesn't even know how many users are on it, really. It just keeps pouring it into the switch. Just one stream for every channel that it's got. Now, what we're going to do here by converting it to uh, unicast, back in the uh, Linux box, which I'm still going to use a Raspberry Pi for now, that's connected to the switch as before. However, what I'm going to do is set up an extra loopback interface internally and I'm going to set the multicast route instead of being out of its inter Ethernet zero interface which it was before I'm going to point it to a new loopback I'm going to call it loopback um, column one and that will then remain within the Raspberry Pi okay so the same multicast program but it's not going to send it well it's going to send it to this interface internally that doesn't leave as opposed to the previous one that was putting it out the network then what I'm going to do is set up a little program which is it, it's a UDP to TCP proxy so what it will do it will listen on a TCP port uh, which I'll call port 81 and when it gets a connection from let's say a user out here it'll have to put in the Raspberry Pi's actual IP address this time it'll say I want to watch something and it'll go to that IP address on that port and then Internally, this program goes to get that information from the loopback interface, because that's where it is, of the multicast group. And then it will come out as unicast, all the way to the person who wants to watch it. The problem with this now is why it's not scalable, is if another two users all want to watch the same program, they have to go to this server as well. And you can see the Raspberry Pi now has to put three copies of the stream out. So given it's only got a 100 meg interface on the on the Raspberry Pi will cripple this. I mean you could use a better Linux box of course this is all just Linux standard but that's pretty much the concept of what we're going to do. Okay I've got a Raspberry Pi set up with um, a TV tuner installed and I'm going to use the route command and ifconfig command and someone's going to say you should be using IP use whatever as long as you get the result I'm just going to show you the concept of how it's done you implement it how you want so, at the moment, I've got an Ethernet adapter and a loopback. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extra loopback and then set a route for the multicast group, well, the multicast range, and send it to that loopback interface. So, I'm going to make the, uh, going to make the interface um, loopback1 and give it the address 2. Simple as that. So, now I've got this uh, extra interface here. Okay? So, if you look at the routing table at the moment, 
anything that's um, not part of its own little 192.168.1 network, anything else is just going to send out that interface. Okay, that's why the multicast worked in the past if you had just a default route because it just fell within that and said, okay, I'll just send it out Ethernet zero and hope for the best. Now though, what we're gonna do is go, um, the network for multicast. Okay, I'm gonna set, highlight it here. The, the multicast range, I'm gonna tell it to send to device that I just made, this uh, loopback one, okay? So now, when you look at the routing table, we see anything that's going to be multicast, instead of sending it out at Ethernet zero, it's going to send it to the loopback. The reason I didn't use the first loopback that was already in there is because that would come out the Ethernet uh, anyway. So I had to make a, a new one, a sub loopback interface, and now it'll work fine. So now, if I run the command that starts the, uh, the program, okay, it's, it's started there now, nothing's actually coming out of the Raspberry Pi at the moment because it's being sent to that new loopback interface. We can check that using another instance. We can just do um, netstat on that, on that box. And if we have a look, we can see the multicast groups that I've started from DV Blast, they're being sent to that loopback interface that we just made. So I know they're not leaving. And you can, if you look at it on the network, do a packet capture, you'll see they're not coming out. So that's the first step. Okay, I'm going to download the program called UDPXY from UDPXY.com and I like to compile it, so I just copy that link and wget to get the file. Once we've got that, unzip it, untar it, go into the directory and make it. So it's now compiling that program for the Raspberry Pi. It doesn't actually take very long at all. Okay, done. Now you can see we've got the program, that UDPXY. And uh, I'll just copy that to user bin so I can just run it from there, okay? So now I'll run that program, UDPXY and port 81, because that's what I decided to serve on, on TCP, okay? Now I'll go and run the um, DB Blast program, which as you know is multicast. It's sending it to that loopback interface, okay? And that's a bit of a problem with my reception, TV reception. It is what it is. So now on VLC, instead of opening a multicast group, we're going to go HTTP colon slash slash the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and port 81 because that's what we're serving on. Now slash UDP slash now it's the multicast group address. So 229.0.0.11 and port 20,000. Now, like magic, there's the TV that's coming from DV Blast, except it's coming through the network as unicast. Uh, so as simple as that. But as I said, that's more taxing now on the Raspberry Pi because it's going. If another person comes along with, um, you know, their channel request, they want to watch something, even if it's the same one, the Raspberry Pi is going to have to put that out twice or three times or however many. So that's where the scalability gets lost. But it'll get you out of trouble if you don't have a multicast network and you want to play around with DVB. Um, there's a little sneaky method on how to do it.